everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Attention, everybody. Hundreds of our friends have written in requesting a photograph of Lum and Abner. We're glad to announce that we now have a limited quantity of 8 by 10 pictures autographed by Lum and Abner themselves. These pictures show the old fellows both in character, just as you've always pictured them to yourself over the radio, and also as they appear in real life. If you want one, and I know you will, just send in your name and address on the back of a wrapper from a half pound or large package of Horlick's malted milk, and we'll send you one right away. Mail your wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. Got that? But remember this, folks. We have only a limited number of these pictures, and this offer will be withdrawn soon. So to make sure of getting one of these grand souvenirs, I suggest you send your wrapper in right away. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner learned the other day that it was unlawful to start a chain letter, but only after the hog chain letter that they had started had spread like wildfire. (laughs) Well, now the old fellows are trying their best to get the thing stopped. However, they're finding it much easier to start than it is to stop. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jotham Down store. Lum is talking over the telephone. Listen. Uh, Luther? Uh, this here's Lum Adder. Why, oh, tolerably well. How do you tell? Uh-huh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, must be ailing. Why, Luther, what I called you up about, uh, you got one of them hog chain letters that me and Abner started, didn't you? Uh, yeah, you was one of them that give us a hog, wasn't you? I know he was. I recollect him. Yeah, well, Abner thought he recollected seeing you bring one over there. Yeah, but a little pulling shiny over. Well, I wish you'd go over there at his place and pick it out and take it back home. Yeah, we're giving them all back. Yeah, we, we found out uh, that that uh, it's again the law to start them chain letters that way. Why, using the mail for defraud or something like that. Dick Huddleston was a telling us. Huh? You have? Well, for the land sake. He says he's got over 400 hogs just in today's so. cell. Uh, his name must be up at the top of the list. In the list huh? How's that, Luther? Well, we just figured if everybody would take their hog back, he'd stop this chain letter we started and get us out of trouble. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, all right, Luther. I don't know to blame you much. No, I don't reckon they could get you. You never started it. All right. Goodbye. What'd you say, Lon? What I thought he'd say. Huh? Just like all the rest of them said he didn't want his hog back. Looks like we've started something here we can't stop. Well, I don't know what to do. Yeah, got to get them hog back somewhere or other. That penitentiary is staring us right smack in the face. Trouble is, everybody around here knows that me and you's the only ones that can get in any trouble over it, and they ain't trying to help us. Why, no, they don't care where we go to the penitentiary or not. I was talking to Jerry Hausner about it, and he just... Come right out flat-footed and said he wouldn't have his home back. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he's the stubbornest ever I ever seen anyway. I think he's kind of crazy myself. Yeah. About the best thing for us to do is just get a truck somewhere and load them hogs up and drive over their places of a night and unload them where they belong into their feller or not. Yeah, but the trouble is, Lom, we don't know where they come from. There were so many folks bringing hogs over there for a day or two that I couldn't keep up with. Them. I don't know who brought them and who didn't. Yeah, that's right. We ought to have made out a list if everybody had brung us one, and we'd have known who to take them back to. Yeah, but we'd never know then that we'd want to give them back. Yeah. They never know what they were doing, did they? Huh? Oh, nothing. Then he'd wish them hogs could talk and tell us where they live at. <laughs> Might talk pig Latin to them, now. <laughs> Do what? Talk pig Latin. You know, egg pay at and lay. Oh, for goodness sake. Here I'm trying to study up some way to keep us out of the penitentiary, and you sit around and think up a bunch of foolish things. Oh, well, I was just joshing off. I know better. I know that they couldn't understand that kind of talk. I can't hardly understand it myself. 
I know I've got more sense than pigs. I oh. wish I'd never heard of a cane letter. They say some fella out in Colorado started them things. Yeah. That is for money. Of course, it was our idea changing it to a hog cane letter. Now, what are we going to do, Lum? I told Elizabeth I'd be back in a few minutes, and she said if I don't get them hogs away from over there by this evening, that she's going to run me and them both off. Well, you better get started running, then, for we ain't going to get them away from there today. I can tell you that right now. Well, uh, why can't we just go ahead and put a fence around that 80 acres we bought down on the river the other day, Lum, and turn them loose on that? Well, what's the use of going to the expense of fencing that place up if we ain't going to keep the hogs? Well, we've got to put them somewhere. They're just ruining our place over there. Looks like a cyclone had hit it. I've got Cedric staying over there now to keep them out of stuff, but I don't think he's able to do it. There's so many of them. Yeah, Granny, there's another thing. We ought to quit selling them over there. Why, sure, that'll be worse off than ever if we don't uh, stop taking folks' money for them hogs that we got that's supposed to be again along. If we start trying to get them hogs back, no telling where we would find them at. I know. They change hands 15 or 20 times by now. Selling them for $3 and no telling what they'd want for them back. No, no. Maybe we could start an unchain letter. Do what? An unchain letter. Start a chain letter where everybody would give somebody a hog will have to go get it back. Mm. That way, eventually, the hogs will all get back to where they started from. Yeah, that's a good idea if they'll do it. Well, it ought to be a heap easier to get somebody to go get one back than it was to get them to give one away. Yeah, but what about that using the mail to defraud that Dick was talking about? Now, let's don't get no more of these things started through the mail, though. Well, it ought to be again a law to start an unchain letter. Well, you better ask Dick about that. Granny, wait a minute here. That is a good idea. That's a good idea even if it won't work. A good idea if it won't work. Why, sure. That way we won't have to send the hogs we got back to where they come from, because, uh... Well, like if they was to send us to the penitentiary for 10 years for starting them chain letters, it ought to take about 10 years off for starting our own chain letters, so we can't get no more trouble on the deal. We just break even. Yeah, well, I'd rather stop fooling with these chain letters, Lom, before we end up on a chain gang somewhere. <laughs> We're what you call fugitives from a chain letter, ain't we? Yeah. <laughs> Come to think about it, though, I don't believe that unchained letter business will work very well anyhow, have I? I don't need that. See, we never got all the 15,625 hogs we're supposed to get. We might have to go out here and buy up to a 3,000. That is, if we start an unchained letter and run it backwards that way. Well, oh, my goodness, I know we don't want to do that, but I'm have to buy up a bat. No, if we can just get them hogs over there back to whoever give them to us, I hope I never see another one as long as I live. Yeah, but... That ain't as easy done as it sounds, old I'm getting them back. Reckon them hogs would know their way home if we was to just turn them loose. You mean just turn them loose and, and let them go home by themselves? Yeah. Dogs and cows and stuff like that will. They will. Cows will always come in at milking time, you know. Yeah. Well, I don't know about hogs, though. I reckon they would. Well, yeah, we'd get shut of them anyway. Yeah. If the post office department comes down here to investigate who started these chain letters, they couldn't prove nothing on us if we never had no hogs over there. Well, if we don't do something about it pretty quick now, Lum, we won't have a chance to turn loose, but Elizabeth's going to do it first. Yeah. I believe that's the best thing for us to do, Abner, just open them gates and let them go. Yeah, i better answer the phone. I think that's all right if it's wrong. It was. I never paid no attention. Yeah, but it was. If that ain't none of the post office authorities here now. Hello? Well, tell me who you want first. Who is this talking? Well, I can maybe a president. You're sure about that? Uh, well, all right. Yeah, this is half of us. This is Lum Eddard talking. Oh, you know what he's meant. <laughs> You've got what? Oh, my goodness alive. Abner, that's the express company in there. The county seat says we've got 36 hogs in there to express hogs. You mean that they broke out and went clean in there? No, no. These are something that's been shipped to us. Oh. Wait a minute. Hold the receiver a minute. Uh, me and Mr. Peabody's will have to have a little meeting over this to decide what to do. What, what, what do you mean? What, what do you want to have a meeting for, Lom? Well, if these hogs that start getting coming in from out of town, we are into it now, sure enough. Well, just tell him that we don't want them. Tell him he'll have to ship them right back to whoever they come from. Tell him we've got more hogs now and we know what to do with it. Trouble is, we'll have to pay the express back on them. Well, I'd a heap rather do that than go to the penitentiary. Yeah, I don't know. Wait a minute. 
I'll find out how much it'll cost to ship them back. Yeah, tell him we never ordered them in the first place. Hello? Mr. Uh, Mr. Express? Uh, uh, why, couldn't we just leave the hogs in the crates they come in and ship them back to whoever it was sent them to us? Uh-huh. Well, how much would that cost? Just the same as it costs to ship them to us, huh? Uh, all right. Well, uh, how much would that cost us now altogether? Well, pick it up and call us back, will you? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Much obliged to you. Lord, yeah, man, that's going to cost a fortune sending all them hogs back. Yeah. He says some of them from New Brasky and California and Pennsylvania and all over the United States. Well, for goodness sake. Oh, man. Wait a minute. Uh, what's that Cedric doing coming over here? I told him to stay over at the place. Hey, Mr. Abner, you better get on over at your place. What's the matter, Cedric? The hogs ain't got out, have they, Cedric? Well, I wouldn't worry about that, Mom. He's aiming on turning them loose anyhow. No, but uh, your names must be at the top of the corn list now for... Folks, she's bringing corn over there so fast I don't know where to put it at. Corn? Uh, Granny Zabner, I forgot about that dead blame corn letter we started. Now we're into it sure enough. <laughs> it was a bad day for Lum and Abner when the chain letter idea hit Pine Ridge. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to hear what Mrs. Fred Carlson of Chicago, Illinois, says about Horlick's malted milk in a recent letter. She writes... When my baby was born, she weighed seven and a quarter pounds and seemed to be a perfectly healthy baby. She stayed this way for six weeks. Then she started to fail. She couldn't hold anything we gave her until we tried Horlick's malted milk. Our neighbor had brought her boy up on Horlick's, and he looked so well and strong. Well, I tried Horlick's, and I wish you could see my little girl now, and you'd never believe she ever was sick. I hope you read this letter over the air for I know it will make some other parents as happy as it made us. Well, thank you, Mrs. Carlson. We were only too glad to read your letter at this time. And as always, delighted to hear what you have to say about Horlick's malted milk. And now, about that picture that Lum and Abner are offering. All you have to do to get one right away is to send in your name and address on the back of a Horlick's malted milk wrapper to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. All right? But just remember to send in soon, as we have only a limited number. This is Carlton Brickert, speak, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health. <laughs>